Jason Carey, North Carolina, November 17th to 19th, as Positive Approach to Care hosts its inaugural conference. Tipa Snow, one of America's leading and innovative educators on dementia, along with her team, will guide you in developing awareness, knowledge, and skills in the challenging area of dementia care, improving relationships and quality of life for care partners, families, and persons living with dementia. Sign up today at tipasnow.com. Until there's a cure, there's care. Welcome to the Dementia Caregiver Talk Show, a podcast to help you navigate the senior care maze. Learn and laugh with us as we discuss creative solutions and ideas to common and uncommon dementia care challenges and how to make sense of the senior care industry and options, even if you're not a professional. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. My name is Valerie and I'm here today with our core crew, which is Tipa Snow, Joanne Westbrook, and Greg Phelps. And um, we'll be talking about a topic that we get asked about frequently, and it's exploring the causes and meaning of sundowning. Okay, so I'll give you the history real quick, because I've been around a long time. We used to truly believe that all sundowning was caused by the sun going down. And that's what made people living with dementia get so confused is the sun went down. Um, It turns out it's not as simple as all that. So it's not just the act of the sun going down. Um, And there's actually a couple theories out there. So that's the background. That's where it comes from is the sun goes down and people get confused. So is, is sundowning used now as a generic term for a wide range of conditions? Uh, if we just put a label on things? Yeah. So it's sort of a, a gross sort of label of things that tend to happen more as the day is ending, as the day is winding down. And so one of the theories is uh, truly people's chemistry, brain chemistry, as the day wears on, they wear out. I mean, and they just don't have that recovery thing that people who don't have dementia have the capacity to do. Like get your second win, go take a walk and then you're good. Although that might not be exactly right because often sundowning happens. A second sort of category is people who are in one location over a long period of time, like a whole day toward the latter part of a day are like, well, I got to, I got to go someplace else. This isn't where I'm supposed to be. So it's a relocation desire. But most of us have that desire at the end of a long, hard day. I want to go home. I want to go to another place. So it seems like, um, and it has to do with your hippocampus, where it doesn't want to stay in just one location forever and ever and ever. And some of us, it's just enough to go to another room. But other people, you know, I got to go someplace else. I mean, I've got to get out of the house. I want to go for a walk. and with intact brains, we can just truly say, okay, I'm going to go for a brief walk. I come back and I'm in a better place and I can do something. With dementia, it might be a little more complicated than that. So but, does, it, does it present uh, the same symptoms all the time with with um, mm-hmm. everybody or is there a wide range of conditions or, or symptoms? Yeah. So there's a wide range. So if you have Lewy body disease, for instance, it's much more likely you'll have more active hallucinations. You may have more delusional thinking. Um, you may have a worsening of balance and coordination in the evening. And it may not just be in the afternoon at sundown. It may be into the night and nighttime restlessness and inability to sleep at night. But during the day, these symptoms don't show themselves as much. Um, with vascular, it's less predictable that it's based on a day rhythm. It's sort of like good moments, bad moments, good, good periods of time, bad periods of time. Um, and then with Alzheimer's, it does tend to be as we get into the afternoon, early evening time, um, things get a little more difficult to keep up with where am I in my life? Where am I in uh, location? Where am I with the people around me? Where am I in my situation? How did I get here? I I don't understand. So for those folks, uh, it's the hippocampus that seems to be cluttered up and messed up, uh, which is learn and remember, find your way and keep up with time. And so that's where we typically see issues. 
for those folks. And with frontal temporal, it could be the um, with temp with um, when you can't with the so with temporal lobe, it may be more of a language. Um, I just I run out. I, can't, I don't have words. I can't process. I can't do language more in the evening or late afternoon. And with a frontal variant, it might get, I get more impulsive or I get more apathetic or I get more oral motor, but more. So some of the symptoms we like the least <laughs> tend to be the ones we notice a lot um, at this time. But it's also when we're at our lowest ebb for most people. It's not our high energy time either. Makes it hard. So Joanne, you've, you've done much more direct care than I have. Um, what does this sort of present uh, on a unit or, or with people that you're dealing with? Well, that could be a real challenge, uh, particularly when you have a mix of different dementias within one unit, um, because they do become anxious. They can cause anxiety with each other. And if your staff isn't well-trained, if they weren't lucky enough to have TIPA, uh, they tend to be anxious themselves and cause more problems by becoming uh, overexcited or I really want to make you sit down right now, you're tired, you need to sit down, when that's the last thing that would be good for them to do. So it's a mix and it's, it's difficult in facilities based a lot on who's in that facility and who's the care partner. <laughs> so it's viewed, Tipa, as, as most care partners as being disruptive behavior. What skills does PAC offer that could help address disruptive behavior? Yeah, so the first is to realize the person is trying to express something they like, want, or need that they don't have, they can't see, they can't find, but they remember as being important. It may be totally inaccurate, but you're looking at a human being in a state of need. So the first thing to do is to get connected to them and not be worried about connecting to them because ultimately it's actually better that I go with you somewhere than that you get out and go on your own or that we argue and fight about you not going out because then it starts to feel like I know that if you got out of here, you know, there's something that's going to happen and your brain says, well, I'll be free of you and I'll be going where I want to go. And my brain goes, you will be unsafe and something bad will happen. And so we start getting into an argument. Again. So the idea is to get connected um, and then to hear what they have to say and then use that as a reflection. So I heard you. I got your message. So it sounds like that's you're needing to get out of here. Yeah, this isn't where you belong. And it's called reflection. And then we say, well, now tell me something. Do you need to do something at home or you just want to be there? So you offer some simple choices. What is it you're trying to do or go to? So that's not your husband. Yeah, and you're looking for your husband. Now, do you need to tell him something or you just want to be with him? So I'm curious. I'm truly getting curious about this thing that they have. And I can only use the words they give me because I'm only sure that they have those words in that moment. I can't assume they have a whole bunch more words they're just not using. So I use their words and then maybe I add one, but I got to give them a visual as much as I give them a verbal on that. So people that have followed positive approach and who have taken some training might be wondering, okay, is this peculiar to a gem state or is this something that will progress with the condition we call dementia? Cool. So we see it most frequently, frankly, um, in people who are in an emerald state because they're, they're running in little episodes and they have a hard time getting out of the loop. And so they get in the loop and they don't know how to get out of the loop. And if they, if they can't find the thing they're looking for, they're really looking for the thing they're looking for, but they can't figure out where it is. And you can maybe distract for a short window, but then we're back to the loop. And because they don't know whether or not they had lunch, they're not picking up on the cues of whether or not they're sleepy all the time. Well, I've got to get home. But they may or may not know which home, where home is, what it is, you know, that they're tired. And what they're really needing to do is take a break and rest. But it can also happen in amber state. It can happen in ruby state. Um, it simply means that the state I was in, I'm not in right now. So if I was a diamond in the morning, I may actually enter a ruby state or an emerald state or an amber state when my chemistry drops. 
And if I'm not getting my needs met and you don't know how to meet my needs, I can drop really fast <laughs> and it can go really bad for both of us. So the more you can support me with what I'm showing you, then sometimes you can settle me there and then figure out, oh, she didn't eat lunch. Oh, yeah, she was anxious at lunch. You're right. She thought her daughter was coming and her daughter didn't come. So she kept waiting for her and she didn't end up eating. If I can get her to go ahead and eat something, well, what it was was low blood sugar. <laughs> and so now she's actually coming back up online and she says, well, well, what, how long have you been here? And it's like, uh, you were wondering how long I'd been here. Yeah, a little while. Well, I didn't see you. Well, I'm the one that, you know, the thing you have to let go of is the reality that I know versus what you're telling me. So I don't need to tell you what you don't need to hear because it won't help. So, Joanne, again, um, in direct care, in, in working with persons living with dementia, obviously training is a, a good investment, even for individuals, but for staff, it's a good investment. Oh, it, it's imperative. I mean, this is something that has been lacking for many, many years. And when we discovered the training that TIPA does, it has changed the whole concept as she was discussing that you're using your own words, you understand where they're coming from, but also TIPA teaches that emotional component that you mirror that person. So you are actually joining that person where they are in the moment. And if we could teach that to our staff, it would be huge because this is the piece I think is missing um, is that they're so caught up. They're just, they can't take a step back and take a breath and find out what they're doing with this person, but join, join them where they are. So yes, it's, it's amazing. So this is uh, promoting a webinar that's coming up on September 30th. How much can I possibly learn in a webinar? I mean, ideally, I'd like to see you and hear you and you know, take the training with you, but what can a webinar teach me as a, as a care partner? One of the things we try to do in the webinar is I cover some content, but then what we do is role play. So I would say, so, hey, listen, I need to get out of here. And we have somebody who could play the other side, which would be. So you need to get, need out, to of get out of here. here. See, I have two skilled people right there. <laughs> and Sorry. the only thing on the webinar is we usually tell one of them at a time to do what they're doing. Um, Stereo but, works. Well, it actually does it, which is the interesting thing when we have two staff who are trying to be helpful and one's on one side of me and one's on the other. That's one of the things we will talk about is one person at a time and which side you want to be on and what are the options you provide and what are some possibilities of what might be driving the behavior. And those are some things we're going to cover in the webinar. Marvelous. And Valerie's, Valerie's going to remind us of what time and what date. Yes. So it's on September 30th from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you can't make it at that time, no worries, because if you register, you get access to the recording of the webinar for one year. And if you are listening to this, let's say in October and the webinar has already happened, no need to worry. If you go to our website at www tipasnow.com and you type sundowning into the search bar, you'll be able to find it and get it right there. And of course, as always, I'm going to put the link to the show notes. Thank you so much, Tipa. A lot of really, I think, really helpful insights and always remembering that there's an unmet need and you just need to figure out what it might be. Put on your, de put on your detective's hat. Yep. You got the emotion on top and you got to figure both out. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Chipa. Thank you so much, Greg and Joanne, and we hope to welcome you back soon. Thanks, Val. Thanks, Val. Madison Carey, North Carolina, November 17th to 19th, this positive approach to care hosts its inaugural conference. Tipa Snow, one of America's leading and innovative educators on dementia, along with her team, will guide you in developing awareness, knowledge, and skills in the challenging area of dementia care, improving relationships and quality of life for care partners, 
families, and persons living with dementia. Sign up today at tipasnow.com. Until there's a cure, there's care.